there are players who are dominant from one side, very strong from one side, either from forehand or from backhand. And you'd say that you want to exploit the other side, but it's not so easy as it looks. In this video, I will show you how you can do that with some simple strategies. My name is Olaf Kozolowski. This is Table Tennis Technalytics. Let's go. So guys, welcome back to another video. I am here in Antwerp in the Kilipong Hall, hall of my sponsor. And today we're going to look into a bit more of a strategical, a bit more tactical video. Well, namely, what if you're playing somebody who is only strong from one side? Logically, those players will always use that shot. For example, if somebody is very strong with their forehand, they're going to try to step around as much as they can. You want to avoid that. You want to avoid that and you want to exploit their weak side a bit more. But again, because they don't use it so often, it's not so easy. So with these four key points that I will show you today, I will show you how it is possible and how you can take that situation and turn it into an advantageous one. And the first one will be sacrifice some to win some. You're not only going to play in the weak side. You don't want to only play in the weak side because as I said again, they're going to step around, they're going to use their better shot. And I had one match a couple of years ago when I was coaching my teammate in Belgium First League and he was playing somebody who had a very strong forehand but a very weak backhand. And yeah, he wanted to receive all the time in the back end of the other guy. As I said again, he was only stepping around. He was yeah, lighting him up from the step around. So I told him it's time to change it up a little bit because he's just too adapted to that ball coming into his back end because he knows, yeah, okay, this is my weak side. I have to be ready and I have to cover it with my forehand as well. So in that situation, what I told him is, yeah, play a bit more into the forehand. Maybe you'll lose some points with that. Again, because he has a strong forehand, the other guy. And then you go back to the back end. And then your opponent, they won't know anymore what they're doing or where the ball will be coming. And that is what you want to do. You want to still keep it varied a little bit. So yeah, they stay in the neutral position. So they cannot just stick to one side or stick to the other side of the table. No, you want to change it up and then maybe afterwards you're going to want to pressure again on the weak side as this was your original strategy. Okay, next up is placement, placement, placement. People who are strong from one side, you don't want them keeping still. You want them to stay moving, stay active. If they just stay in one position, if they get too comfortable, yeah, then they'll just make you move all the time. They will put you under pressure and you want to avoid this at all costs. You do this by changing directions a little bit more. Normally, you'd say those players, they will play a lot of diagonal because then they expect the ball to come diagonal again to their strong side. No, so if you change directions, well, then first of all, probably you're going to play in their weak side, for example, if you play down the line. But not only down the line, you can also really look up their middle. I mentioned this a little bit in the, the video of the passive game, where yeah, you cannot forget the middle. This gives you some opportunities. I explained it there if you want, link up here, I think. But you'll see that changing down the line, changing to the middle, well, they will give you a lot of opportunity to take over or for the other person to yeah, just to play weak ball. So don't just play diagonal all the time. So be wary of the placement at all times. Okay, third of all is that second position is hammer time. So normally when yeah, those players, they're in their rhythm and they're just playing their top spins as they should, it's very hard to get them out of there. But if there is a sort of a lapse of concentration or if you really change directions properly or you accelerate a little bit. Echt waar, Luc jongen. Ja, rup maar op. Maar je smet ze gewoon verder weg. <laughs> je smijt ze weg, pak die een bak. Ik weet niet meer wat ik moet zeggen. Hè. Bon. Daar hè. Zo, so, wat ik was zei is dat als ze under pressure and they are falling a little bit behind, falling a little bit backwards. This is the time really to put pressure on that weak side of them. And you can go over, do whatever you want, but you have to set yourself up for that 
by changing directions or by whatever, by accelerating. Once you get them in this position, once they are not really so aggressive anymore, yeah, this is really the time to put pressure on them. Okay, and last up is that if you cannot start yourself, then just make them start. This is also because you have also a little bit this idea that, okay, I'm so scared of this other person's forehand or this other person's backhand that I want to start myself just to avoid it all in all. And, but it's not so easy to do, especially because, yeah, for example, if you want to receive short all the time, because again, you want to take the initiative yourself, at some point, you're going to have a bad receive or some bad receives. And then, yeah, they go over the table, they finish the point before basically it even started. So sometimes it's just better to push long, for example, for which I also have a video for, so go check it out. Pushing long with enough quality, yeah, this will set you up for normally a decent ball, which you can control. And then you just wait your turn in the rally to go over. Sometimes, again, it's just better to make them start instead of trying to force everything all the time by starting yourself hopelessly. Okay guys, that was the video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If there are any suggestions, any comments, any questions, please leave them down below. I'll take a look at it. And yeah, just hopefully this helps you with a little bit more of a strategical sort of video. Because I also got some questions about that to make a little bit more videos about match tactics, match strategies, this kind of stuff. So yeah, here you go. Because there are a lot of people who are much, much stronger from one side than from the other. And yeah, you want to exploit that weak side. It's not so easy to do. So hopefully with this video, I gave you just some ideas, some guidelines lines and hopefully you can use them to your advantage. Again, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I will see you in a next video.